What's going on everybody? It's your boy Kilo Loco and today I want to talk about something that I find that uh, a lot of beginners end up uh, dealing with this and I know I was I, I know I told you I was going to not talk about beginner topics but I see this far too often and I wanted to cover it and get done with all right so what I see is that you guys are doing your UI table view cells wrong you're populating your data wrong I don't like it I don't want to see it and if I see you doing this after this video I will find you. I will do stuff to you that you do not want done. All right, let's get into it. So what we're gonna do is let's take a look at our beginner project. As you can see here, we have our main storyboard. We just got this little navigation controller. This is the actual project right here. Um, let's go ahead and take a look. We have a user object, very simple, name, email, user, VC, very simple, a list of users, a table view, and. Keep in mind, this is a table view controller. Uh, like I said, if you want the beginner project, link is in the description, grab that. And then uh, also I see, this is what I mainly see, right? So I see this is how you guys are, you know, populating your data. And then this is what your UI table view cell uh, looks like. And I'm sick and tired of seeing this. So let's fix this. What you actually should be doing because uh, your view controller really shouldn't even know anything about your table view cell, um, like its attributes, really, because um, it has none, that's, that's none of its business, you know? Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our UI table, or we're gonna go into our, our, our custom cell, right? Which is just simply displaying, you know, username, or the user's name, and then the user's email address, right? So, Keep in mind, and this is this is regardless of whether you're doing it in storyboards or or in code. You know, either way, if it was if it was um, if it was in code, then you would just you know you would just have a var label, right? So this goes for both. Um, you need to do this regardless of what coding style you choose. Anyway, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna write a function, and we're, I, I like to call mine populate, right? Populate. The first argument or the first uh, parameter name is going to be with and then whatever the object I'm going to be using to populate this cell with. So in this case, this is a user cell. What am I going to populate it with? A user. All right. So we're going to populate it with a user. And like so, now all we're doing is we're passing in a user into the user cell and then the user cell is going to take that data and it's going to do whatever it needs to do with it. All the logic and all that stuff is going to be held in here. Not in my user, not in my view controller. I don't want this in my self or raw index path. It's going to get big. It's going to get long. That's what she said, right? So what we need to do is we need to say name label dot text is equal to user dot name, right? Next up, we need to say email label dot text is equal to email uh, uh, user dot email. You guys got me so on one right now, going crazy a little bit, right? Um, anyway, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna comment this out. And right now we're not doing anything with the user, so we're gonna just run this real quick just to make sure that everything's still working, we didn't break anything, and we're getting a blank list. Right, so as you can see, I did this in storyboards. Gave them default, um, gave them default values in my storyboard. If you take a look, uh, the prototype cell has name, it has email, and that is what's reflected in the in the app, as expected. So what we're gonna do? I'm gonna go back over to our users VC, and now instead of you know, doing all this logic right here, you know, there might be even more complex stuff in your, your custom cell, right? All we're going to do is we're going to say cell dot populate with, and guess what? You pass in the user. Oh my God, right? Now what's happening is you're, you're essentially, this is actually technically a form of dependency injection. You're injecting a user into your cell through a method. It's called method injection, I think. I think that's the correct terminology for it, but it doesn't matter. Who cares what it's called? Anyway, what we're doing is we're passing it into this cell and we're updating all of our UI because this is a view class, right? We're updating all of our UI 
right here through the right here through the um, populate function. So it's it's so much cleaner if you do it that way, guys. So make sure that you're doing it that way. Now, there's another thing that I want to touch on as well. Uh, something that might make your life a little bit easier. Uh, you don't have to do this. It's completely up to you. And what I usually see is when we DQ with a U, uh, DQ reusable cell with identifier, right? We usually put something in here. Maybe you don't put cell. I wouldn't recommend putting cell. It's just kind of like very, um, you know, generic and not descriptive whatsoever. So what I would usually do is I would actually um, enter in the class name, right? I would usually enter in user cell, right? And if I were to do that, what I would have to do is I'd have to make sure that I go back over to my cell in my storyboard or wherever in my code if we're doing it programmatically and we need to make sure that it's called user cell, right? Well, that's cool and all, but um, if possible, I like to stay away from uh, spelling out and it's still working. I like to stay away from using strings if possible. Also, I like to, you know, make my code all kinds of different colors um, when I create my own variables. So what I like to do is I actually like to put, um, I like to put a static uh, constant on my cells. So what we could do is we could do static let identifier, which is of type string. Uh, well, you don't even have to put it of type string, but anyway, we could say this is gonna be equal to user cell, right? So now, even though we're still spelling it out right here, it's a little bit more handy when we're actually doing it um, programmatically. Anyway, all we have to do right here is we could just say user cell dot identifier, identifier, like so. And now this will still work because we're essentially pulling the identifier right off of the cell, right? So still gonna work, but, 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 let's take it one step further, right? What we're gonna do is we're actually going to do an extension on our UI table view cell. So we'll do extension, ex, damn. Don't know how to spell today. UI table view cell. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna add a static, a static variable. Uh, no, can we do a static let on an extension? I don't think you can. No, you can't. A static variable on identifier, and it's going to be of type string. And what this is going to return is this is going to return the uh, let's see, let's see. We're going to get an error right here because it's automatically there, but we're going to re return a string describing describing self. Right. So now every time we have a UI table view cell and we um, access the identifier um, variable that we created, the static variable, now what it's going to do is it's actually going to return a string version of itself. And if we go ahead and run that, what do you know? It still works. Oh my God. Right. Isn't that nifty? Oh, that's so nifty, Kyle. All right. One last thing that I see that you guys aren't doing out there and I'm like, why the hell are you not doing this? Maybe your teacher didn't teach you. That's why you got Kilo Loco here, don't worry. Anyway, what I usually see is that you guys don't implement your prepare for reuse, prepare for reuse method that is automatically given to you by a UI table view cell. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say super dot prepare for reuse, just to make sure that we're not losing out on any other functionality since we're overriding this method. And what we need to do is we need to make sure that every time uh, we are reusing our cell, um, we want to clear out all the data just so that there's, there aren't remnants like laying around and populating with the wrong information. Now you usually only notice this when um, you're dealing with images, like if you're scrolling really fastly up and down and um, maybe you see your images pop up and then they're like in the wrong spot and they're duplicates and stuff like that. That's because you're not using this prepare for reuse. So what you have to do is you have to take each and every one of your properties, your visual properties. You don't have to, but I would highly recommend it as you can see. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna set them all to their default value. 
So um, for a text, I'm just gonna remove all. You could also set it to nil. I prefer to just do remove all. I feel like it's a little bit safer, but hey, to each their own. If you had an image, right? If you had like some image view, what you would do is you would say image is equal to nil. This one you can obviously set to nil quite simply because um, it's just an image it's all you're almost always dealing with optionals when you're dealing with images i obviously don't have an image view in our uh, cell right here so this is obviously going to fail but if you find yourself in a situation where you need to work with images in your custom cell you need to make sure that you set that image to nil so that's all just those three simple little tips use a method to update all the ui in your table view cell if you would like to do something a little bit sexier what you can do is you could actually use an extension on the ui table view cell class and give it this static variable called identifier which will allow you to use whatever your cell is um, whatever is subclassing from a ui table view cell and just say dot identifier it's going to automatically give it the name that is spelled out exactly like this so you still have to go back over here to your main.storyboard and make sure that it's spelled out exactly like its class or else it won't work. But yes, um, that's a little sexy trick right there. And then the last thing is make sure you guys are using your prepare for reuse. So that's all. If you guys liked the video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. If you have any recommendations on uh, other videos that I should cover, leave it down below in the comments. Make sure you share this video with as many programmers as you possibly can because I see this far too often and I hate it. Okay, and then last but not least, make sure you subscribe because you know you love the way I explain stuff. Shh. You ain't getting this anywhere else, right? All right, I will see you guys later. Keep coding passionately.